Amit sir, please make me host. Yeah, yeah, okay, Rakesh, yeah.
Oh, who is answering today? Uh, sir, I am. Uh, I am Dr. Tanmay. Tanmay. Yes, sir. Okay. You are uh, from you? Tanmay. Uh, I am from Mumbai, but currently pursuing MCH at Madras Medical College. Oh, and uh, who else is answering? Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, I'll be answering, sir. Uh, Dr. Shashwat from. Uh, Shashwat. Yes, sir. Okay. Answer me, sir. Uh, Ajinkya from Jaslok, sir. Okay. Ajinkya, Sashwat, and uh, Tanmay. Yes, sir. Uh, we are just waiting for Paras to join. <coughs> so, all of you now. Oh, good morning, sir. Like, as you are sitting in your consulting, the same way you have to answer as you see the patient. Okay. Uh, okay sir. Good morning. I'm Dr. Meenakshi. Yes, uh, also want to participate in answering. Meenakshi, welcome. I think after Tanvi, you are the first girl who is going to answer now. Thank you. Sir. Oh, very good. We are very happy. Yes, sir. So in your way, how many girls have taken urology? You know it? Uh, a lot of almost 30%. Okay, okay. Because I think now more female are, uh, you know, taking urology. Yeah. See, in, this is not your examination. This is just a teaching and learning. You people are very well read. So we learn from you. At the same time, we teach you. Okay? So if you don't know any answer, don't get afraid. So we'll just wait for Paras. Once Paras joins, Gite sir has joined. Pankaj Maheshwari sir has joined. Good evening, Karan Bhai. I'm there. Yes. Pankaj Bhai, welcome. How is the financial position of USI? All good in your hands? <laughs> no, no, it is very good. Don't worry. It will remain good. <laughs> no, we, are, we are confident about you. No problem. <laughs> I'll just find out whether Paras has joined or not. So, you know, today we are going to have multiple uh, scenarios. And as usual, first, we will discuss one case at length with whatever possible, you know, even theory questions which are asked in your exam uh, that we will complete. And then we will show you different cases, mainly a short history and the investigations that you will ask and a quick management. Welcome, Dr. Hudedar. Thank you. Irene, welcome. Hello, 
गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग अवर मेन पर्सन डॉक्टर पारस हेज नॉट येट जॉइन हाँ नाउ ही हेज जॉइन सर कैन वी स्टार्ट नाउ उसको वार लग सर अच्छा आई requesting everybody to go on mute because there's a lot of background sound only the presenter should be unmuted okay sir please unmute yourself uh, uh, i am not at all
Can we? Can we start now? Yes, sir. Okay, so again, just introduce yourself, all those who are answering today. Uh, I'm Dr. Tanmay. Okay, Tanmay. Uh, sir, I'm, I'm Dr. Shashwat Singh from Dhule. Shashwat. And Good evening, sir. Uh, Dr. Ajinkya from Jaspokta. Ajinkya. And? I'm Dr. from Hyderabad. Okay, fine. So let's go ahead. Paras, you can start. So scenario first. Uh, she is a 65-year-old lady, housewife resident of Mumbai, presented with a complaint of involuntary leakage of urine since two months. Fine. So this is a history. What are the differential diagnoses? I think that will come in your mind and accordingly what history will ask. Uh, so considering the only complaint she is giving is involuntary leakage of urine. So one could be a uh, patient could be in uh, over incontinence. Then uh, uh, could be senile. Uh, 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 then I like to uh, further evaluate the uh, complaint what patient has given and I like to like, ask you questions. Regarding the, uh, the what is the uh, uh, regarding the leakage? So what is the color consistency of the? Yeah, color yeah. Yes. Before that, before you go ahead, sir asked you a very very pertinent question. What are the what all are the causes that come into your mind for incontinence so, or leakage of urine? So you said one is incontinence. Then you can enumerate all the further causes. Then you go to negative history. No? If you have a chance, examiner has given you a chance to enumerate all the causes where you think leakage can happen. You can stress so, further on incontinence, stress urinary incontinence, stress urinary urinary incontinence, urinary incontinence, urinary incontinence sometimes overactive bladder, dinner with a twinter, or attack uh, of vaginal fistula. So many causes you know of incontinence. So you should tell all those causes before you go ahead. Right? Yes. Very good. So, considering the only complaint patient has given, the, the, the diagnosis that uh, come into mind, it could be a uh, patient would be having incontinence, either stress urinary incontinence, or incontinence, or plain incontinence, could be secondary to uh, a psychovaginal fistula, or active bladder, or denervated bladder, or due to... Uh, 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 that's it. can also add if they like to add some causes. Remember one thing, this is a platform where you can talk. We are your friends. Don't hesitate. Make a mistake. Do it here rather than just talk. Let us be friends, okay? All of us. Sir is very cool. Gita sir is also very cool. I am also very cool. Let's open your open your skill pump. Um, sir, an underactive bladder with overflow incontinence. Okay, go ahead. Uh, enumerate the negative history. Uh, sir, I, uh, I'd like to further ask a few questions to you in order to uh, further cut down to my differential diagnosis. I'd like to know what is where was the onset of the leakage? Was there any preceding factor? Any uh, what is the color of the uh, color of the leakage? What is the consistency of the leakage? Is it associated with voiding or not voiding? 
uh, associated wording or uh, it is associated with position uh, with the patient how many uh, patient is using pads or diaper how many pads she is using in a day how many she is using in the night then uh, i'll also like to ask about any history of lower urinary tract symptoms dysuria hematuria then i'll also like to ask uh, the history of any past uh, surgery so could be gynecology and obstetric history in past then uh, i'll like to also ask about uh, uh... sir we'd like to know whether the involuntary leakage of urine is continuous continuous or, or it is intermittent uh, and... or if it's associated with any uh, uh, increase in abdominal pressure activities then we like to know associated uh, any lower urinary tract symptoms or fever any pain in the perineum or uh, flank pain okay so uh, sultana when you ask about the leakage or incontinence if the patient says i have got a continuous incontinence means what a continuous incontinence it is above the level of the external sphincter so uh, it can be a vesico vaginal fistula or a urethro vaginal fistula or it can be a urethro vaginal fistula above the level of external sphincter so it is continuous and the night so if there is a continuous leakage what are the possibility that comes into your mind uh, continuous patient is saying i am not able to pass urine it's a continuous leakage vesico vaginal fistula uh, urethro vaginal fistula it can be uh, mm. so which type of urethro vaginal fistula will give rise to continuous leakage above the level of external urethral sphincter No, no. Sir, bilateral, bilateral, bilateral. Or... Yes, sir. Either it is bilateral or, 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 or a solitary kidney. Or a solitary kidney with the thing. Or uh, a case of solitary kidney with the UEF. Or the other okay. side is tied, and other opposite side is. Yeah. Uh, so system. one side is ligated, and one side is urethrovaginal. Uh, urethrovaginal. Fine. Okay. So what are the? I just missed it. What are the? When someone says that I have got incontinence of urine or leakage of urine, so basically we think of whether there is a fistula or there is some sort of incontinence. So it can be like a urinary incontinence. They or enumerated it all those causes. Severe stress yeah. urinary incontinence. It can be also because of mixed urinary incontinence. right or there can be sometime in usually you see in male but in female with the severe we have seen cases where there is severe urethral stenosis and there is bladder which is like you know uh, one and half to 2 liters and there is continuous retention overflow so that is also possible someone has written about severe infection so in that also patient cannot hold urine for a longer period of time and then all the fistula can someone tell me about the definition of fistula the fistula uh, is an fistula is an abnormal uh, epithelialized connection between uh, two body cavities or a body cavity to the outside external environment yes sultana you have got some better definition no <clears throat> to uh, between uh, hollow organs and so it is a epithelialized or non epithelialized tract abnormal connection between the two hollow organ or to the hollow organ and the Surface body cavity or any system. abnormal cavity fine dr gita you want to add something no sir it's just uh, uh, abnormal 
abnormal epithelized communication between the uh, two cavities or two all organs it should be definitely epithelized and both ends should be communicating to some cavity or some organ okay paras can you tell us yes so uh, according to patient she was asymptomatic two month back when she developed involuntary painless leakage of urine per vaginum sudden onset progressive aggravated during standing and walking slightly decrease while lying down there is absence of normal maturation or sense of bladder fullness patient is uh, always on diapers and changes 6 to 7 times per 24 hours uh, patient underwent vaginal hysterectomy 3 month back in view of uterine prolapse uh, there is uh, no uh, uh, involuntary leakage of urine associated with cough or sneezing no history of lower urinary tract symptoms in past no history of prudent discharge no history of fever dysuria hematuria lithuria no history of loss of weight malaise cough jaundice loss of appetite no history of any radiation therapy for malignancy no history of any obstructive labor and trauma in past uh, patient is known hypertensive and is on medication with his uh, hypertension is well controlled no other comorbidities uh, patient is mixed by diet no addiction menarche at around 14 years of age menopause at 55 year of age uh, patient is para 4 uh, with uh, four living issues all full term normal deliveries uh, no history of any post menopausal bleeding no uh, family history that is contributory so this is all about in history yeah so i think yeah, what is your now diagnosis uh, sir i like to know about the uh, like she had she had uh, vaginal hysterectomy done three months back and uh, i like to know more about the uh, the uh events during the hysterectomy uh, when she was uh, for how long she was admitted and was she on catheter or how, and uh, when was the catheter removed after removal of catheter did she had any uh, such complaints or uh, it has started uh, only two months back and within uh, uh, one month back she was perfectly all right i like to check the op notes also then whether the blood transfusion was given or not because uh, blood transfusion you, was given yeah. or not and how much time it had taken uh, what was the duration of the surgery was so there any uh, complication explained to the relatives or uh, anything uh, uh, told to the relatives of the patient during that uh, past admission and the surgery and uh, whether any other surgeon was called in between uh, yes sir you know, because all this will contribute to your probable Complete. diagnosis that it was a difficult case. case whether it was you know So that is what you want to know, right? Fine, Doctor Maheshwari. Now you want to add anything? Uh, no, uh, Doctor Gurukshe, it's going good. Okay, so Sultana, this is history. Now what you want to do? Okay. To examine. Uh... Okay. Fine. so you want to do a general in general examination what are the important things you will like to see the presence of uh, uh, nutrition okay nutrition status yes presence of uh, any lymphadenopathy and uh, the blood pressure of the patient and pulse rate saturation levels and uh, uh cvs uh, cns examination cardiovascular system examination abdominal examination you looking at lymphadenopathy yes sir lymphadenopathy uh, in the uh, groin region in the uh, pelvic lymphadenopathy uh, abdominal no but why what is there in your mind uh, maybe some uh, malignancy which is not likely in this particular patient infection might be okay that that is uh, one of the cause but 
whenever you are asking about uh, there is very important thing is to ask about the previous uh, events uh, that is in detail about that spectrum so along with what was the questions already discussed regarding to that uh, spectrum events you must ask what is the indication of that spectrum if possible you must ask for the discharge card of that particular patient you, you must ask for the histopathology report of that particular spectrum then is there any history of anterior radiation in some time people will give radiation for cs cervix initially if it is inoperable and then any any history and uh, when when it was uh, the leak was started immediately after the removal of catheter catheter removed at third day seven day then uh, leak started immediately leak started delayed Uh, then recatheter. After uh, is there any catheter right now? After catheterization, leak is decreased, not decreased. Leak leak is increased in some specific position or situation position. That all things are related to the this whole whole story is uh, should revolve around that uh, hysterectomy because the things has happened after the hysterectomy. Then uh, part of uh, examiner may ask you what uh, what type of hysterectomy it is open hysterectomy total abdominal hysterectomy laparoscopy because laparoscopy is more prone for uh, injuries um, than the open hysterectomy uh, and all other questions already discussed by Gorang Sasser and uh, told by Ajink is again important. So in such a patient post hysterectomy you already know the histopathology report uh, so considering there and. Uh... If it's a malignancy, you would know uh, specifically in that patient. Then again, in the past, uh, you must ask about any history of LSCS, multiple LSCS, because any any past history of multiple surgeries, because uh, where usually gynecologist over jealously dissect the bladder from the uterus with watch piece or thumb, and uh, there is a thinning of that uh, bladder wall. Which is get devascularized and uh, which end up into the fistula. That is one of the common cause. Uh, if, uh, then multiple LSCS into history will uh, there is adhesions between the uh, uterus and bladder. That again during separation may got bladder may got injured. Then uh, another thing is the uh, uh, sutures while suturing the vaginal cup. Uh, the if, if 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 they are not able to uh, separate bladder from the vaginal cup. Then they may take a suture, and that suture may have ischemic necrosis of that particular part of the uh, bladder wall, end up into the vaginal fistula. These are the some uh, uh, tricky things which can usually happen with gynecological hand. And if they, uh, again, uh, if, if they have asked for someone help, that indirectly suggests that there is a, some event in between intraoperatively. Okay, Baras, go ahead. So in general examination, there is no pallor rectus cyanosis, clubbing lymphadenopathy, or pedal edema. Uh, the uh, Kefernowski scale is hundred. BMI is twenty four kg per meter square. BP vital are stable. Head to toe spine examination is normal. Per abdomen examination is grossly normal. Uh, for vaginal examination, external genitalia are normal, no skin excoriation seen. Vaginal mucosa is atrophic, leakage of urine seen per vaginum. A urethral opening is normal, no evidence of cystocele or rectocele seen. On per speculum examination, there is no evidence of rectocele or cystocele. Fistula opening seen on the anterior vaginal wall uh, with indurated margin with a urine leak is also seen. There is no bleeding. Uh, from uh, from the fistula side. So, uh, what important things you seen or palpit or um, during the per speculum examination, per vaginal examination, and per abdominal examination? Anyone can answer. Uh, so, during per abdominal, firstly, you'll see the. Uh, 
uh, how is the scar and uh, any wound infection or any say uh, healing by secondary intention uh, any signs of that uh, and then local examination sir and inspection i would look for uh, firstly the skin around the perineum uh, the labia how are the, uh, how are the labia is it healthy or not then uh, also uh, during uh, inspection i'd like to look at the uh, how is the uh, vaginal mucosa uh, during uh, per speculum examination i'll see the overall health of the vaginal mucosa whether uh, uh, whether a fistula can be identified if yes the number the exact site and size with the uh, margins of the fistula and uh, uh, on uh, digital examination if uh, i can reach uh, the fistula with a finger and uh, uh also on post speculum uh, whether pooling of uh, urine is uh, present or not uh, on post speculum examination uh, i'd like to see uh, in duration of uh, on digital examination the position of the fistula the in duration of the margins uh, any other uh, uh, significant findings and if uh, malignancy in case suspected uh, any uh, uh, any post any growth uh, that can be palpable right or left that is a, a, a palpable finding on per examination assessment of the uh, mobility of the tissue around and uh, the infection edema and infection seen around that induration of can palpated in induration with pulling of the uh, urine uh, from uh, pulling in the vagina can be seen uh, with ammonia ammonia Ammonial smell uh, and excoriation of vulva can be seen. Uh, these are the things. Uh, plus, uh, if the fistula is too large, sometimes the bladder mucosa may prolapse. Prolapsed bladder, bladder mucosa can be seen from the vagina. So the size of the the ruminous of the vagina, then elasticity of the vagina, then surrounding mucosa, uh, mucosa of the vagina is good or bad, inflamed or not inflamed. and any suture material is all things you if, if you explain in detail the examiner know that you have assisted the patient regularly and uh, that will show your knowledge to the examiner so what are the different clinical test that will differentiate different types of fistula sultana can you enumerate and can you tell us how to do uh, yes so they are the um, uh, filling the uh, the dye test which is there and the double dye test which is there and um, uh, sperm speculum examination uh, and uh, bony's test to rule out any stress urinary incontinence associated oh. yes so i think what is this uh, single dye and double dye test sir uh, single dye with three swab and double dye with three swab test so single dye test uh, single dye with three swab test is uh, we uh, first uh, empty the bladder with uh, putting the catheter inside then we put three swabs in the vagina in the upper mid and lower vagina then after emptying we'll partially fill the bladder uh, and uh, put methylene uh, blue dye uh, then we uh, after 10 minutes we ask patient to roam around and walk around then after 10 minutes we remove the swab and inspect the swab if the upper uh, one swab is just wet and there is no color it suggests there is some retro uh, vaginal fistula if the middle one is uh, soaked in blue then it is vasco vaginal fistula or the lower two or if there is vasco vaginal or the uh, urethro vaginal fistula the two dye test is similarly but uh, what we add is we add uh, oral pyridia uh, pyridoxine 200 mg is given uh, and then uh, 
again we uh, two hours before sir okay then again uh, in spite of the upper one which is getting wet we'll have a, a yellowish or a orange colored uh, surface of the upper swab uh, which suggests the urethrovision of this okay fine so now after this examination now what you want to do sashwat uh, sir we, we, we want to go ahead uh, and uh, order a baseline urine routine along with uh, cbc and renal profile and uh, uh, basic ultrasound uh, kub uh, i'd like to do sir you want to do only ultrasonography in this test or you want to do something else but for diagnostic you want to avoid ultrasonography and do something else sir uh, in our practice what we are doing is uh, we have uh, ultrasound available in our clinics so we are routinely doing uh, no, sonography no. for all patients no 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 listen listen this, this is this is not we have to answer in exam because the ultrasound ultrasonography has its own can seen it yes you can tell start it like uh, it is a extension of clinical examination one another thing is if the fistula is of small size then you can assess the capacity of the bladder you can assess the thickness of the bladder and another if it is very large then the bladder may be bladder may be completely empty assessment sometimes difficult another thing is assessment of the upper tract if we don't know it is a, it is a vaginal fistula it is a urethrovaginal fistula or it is a combined fistula sometimes urethrovaginal fistula They continuously leak, and upper tract may be empty, but sometimes it may get uh, scatterized, fibrosed, and uh, having associated on that particular side hydronephrosis. That can be as again assessed by the ultrasonography. So upper, assessment of the upper tract, assessment of the bladder, is uh, this this will give a clue. Ultrasonography is al always useful in such type of cases. So as a routine, we are all doing ultrasound. So there is no harm, and the way Gita sir has told, that is yes. the way to answer. Not just just saying that we are doing it there, uh, right? And Gorang sir sir's question was very specific. Apart from ultrasound, would you like to do anything? At that stage, you must answer the specific question. You when asked about ultrasound, would you do the ultrasound or not? Then you should answer what Gita sir has said. And if asked a specific question, would you like to do anything else? So then, what would you like to do? Sir, we'd like to question. do a uh, uh, CT urography with the CT system. Yeah, so then you should have been specific, no? When you are not specific, then examiner gets irritated and goes to why you are uh, uh, talking only about ultrasound that I am doing in my hospital. When you are asked a specific question, then be very focused and answer that. Okay? Yes. Go ahead. Take, Now ask for the CT. Taking taking the help of institutional protocol should be the last answer. Fine. Paras, just show them all the reports. What they were asked. Yes, sir. So the urine routine microscopy uh, was done, and it shows RBC five to eight per high power field, WBC twenty to thirty per high power field. Bacteria was present that was E. coli, sensitive to nitroferritin, meropenem, cefepirazone, and amoxiclav. Hemoglobin was thirteen point six. TLC was fourteen thousand eight hundred. Creatinine is one point two five. So this was the CT scan films. Can someone try to read it? Tanmay. Oh, sir, uh, this is a CT scan of uh, abdomen and pelvis taken in uh, plain and uh, delayed phase with uh, uh, with all the soft organs which appear normal. On uh, the delayed phase films, there is uh, seen as uh, Uh, the upper tract appears to be normal. There is no uh, dilatation of the, the uh, pelvic cavity system or the ureter. Uh, uh, bladder, uh, there is air in the bladder. Along with that, uh, a Foley's bulb is visualized, uh, and uh, there appears to be a leakage of uh, dye into the vagina from the bladder in the lower part. Can you show us where is it? Uh, in the lower uh, 
in the last line in the left the most uh, cut in the uh, uh, delayed in the histogram phase can you just enlarge it parts very good but you must always ask in the exam you will you will not be wrong if you ask that but i want to see the urography film also here it may not be available but you can ask for it oh that's sorry that's the histogram itself sir so basically here it was not seen very nicely yeah so if you don't see this you should ask for the lateral film and like dr hiran yeah. soda said na of the dynamic yeah and the best part is to have a cd okay paras show them extra film whatever we have taken yes so show the last one yeah enlarge it yeah tanmay can you comment on now uh yes sir there appears to be a thin fistulous abnormal connection between the posterior wall of the bladder and the anterior uh, wall of the vagina uh with the pooling of the contrast within the vagina on histogram so tanmay here you could have said that i am seeing a foolish catheter and sometimes what they do is as an extension of the ct urography they do ct histogram. histogram as well yes so sometimes it may be a small fistula and not delineated just by the iv contrast so sometimes you may have to inject the contrast so that that will earn you more marks you know if you say that i saw the full is catheter and maybe so they did a histography also so uh, as far as radiology is concerned uh, whenever uh, the ct ct is available and ct is not available situation when ct is not available conventional ivp plus uh, wadding cystiorthogram whatever with uh, lateral images of wadding cystiorthogram these are the conventionally how the uh, vasa vaginal fistula is diagnosed and now nowadays it is a ct ivp with uh, ct cystography okay. delayed phase because uh, the quant contrast need to come to reach to the bladder and bladder need to fill so there one must have to take up uh, delayed uh, film shop uh, ct uh, or uh, if it is not your bladder is not getting filled then you have to place the catheter and make the bladder full and take ct cut so these are the two ways conventionally if the examiner ask it is ivp and uh, uh, wadding cystogram with lateral films or ct ivp uh, with delayed ct cystography So in exam you must tell the CT IV pain delayed CT histography will be the answer. Then he may ask uh, when you when you will uh, so so another radiological in, uh, examination is like histosalping for graphy if you are suspecting vascular cutaneous and fistulas. Then uh, 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 MRI in some complex fistulas involving the bladder neck or some other surrounding structures if you uh, if you are clinically suspecting. then i am a there is a role of mri so this is all about radiology in vasa uh, vaginal fistula okay paras just read the report paras so there was a, a defect of size 2 mm in partially distended urinary bladder with iodinated contrast medium leaking into the vagina across the small defect and the posterior wall of the urinary bladder okay so now sultana this is the situation what we like to do i would like to further evaluate it with a cystoscopy okay so why you want to do a cystoscopy uh, to uh, see the uh, presence or uh, location of the fistula Uh, precisely in relation to the ureters and the broader neck, and to then, see epithelial, it's a, a granulation tissues there, or it is a mature fistula, um, any other fistulas which are uh, present in it. Uh, so number one, you want yeah. So you want to see how many fistulae are there? Number, correct? Yes. Second thing, you want to see the size. You want yes. to see the site. Yes. 
whether it is near to the urethra, whether it is supratrigonal, whether it is near to any uretic orifice, then yes. whether there is any induration, inflammation, any foreign body is seen inside the bladder. Correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ajinkya, you want to add anything? You want to see in cystoscopy? Uh, cystoscopy, I like to see while doing cystoscopy, I like to inspect the urethra, the bladder neck, then the points which uh, already we have discussed. Then also I like to do an RGP in this patient. Why you want to do RGP? Uh, in order to check, sir, uh, there could be confirmed uh, there are chances that uh, with bicycle vaginal pistola, we have also urethral vaginal pistola. So if, if, if you have you have done one of the best investigation that yes, is CTI, and uh, still if, if, if your CT urography is equivocal or non-conclusive, and uh, there is a hydrotonephrosis you requires on CT uh, uh, urography, uh, then in some that, that particular patient sometimes it, there may be need of a RGP, but feeling RGP primarily in the exam is not a good idea. And uh, as far as uh, cystoscopy is concerned, capacity of the bladder is very important because if the fistula is large, sometimes uh, gap may be required, some, sometimes augmentation may be required, sometimes uretic implantation may be required because fistula is very close to the uretic opening, so the capacity of the bladder. Another thing is the uh, maturity of the fistula. The fistula, if it is immature fistula or mature fistula that you have to uh, identify on the cystoscopy when there is a bullous edema around the uh, fistulous opening without a distinct ostia, that is, the, the ostium is not clearly fibrosed, then such type of fistula is immature fistula, not good for the treatment, uh, surgical treatment, and uh, mature fistula is always a smooth margin with uh, dis uh, distinct to variable size uh, ostia, is a feature suggestive towards the mature fistula. So, examination under anesthesia, I will tell it like in spite of cystoscopy, it is examination under an anesthesia. Usually, we will do examination and anesthesia. We include uh, per speculum examination, per vaginal examination, fistoscopy, vaginoscopy, and there is a complete uh, package for diagnosis of the vasic vaginal fistula, plus minus RGP if it is indicated uh, for to roll out the urethral vaginal fistula. So, it can be done isolatedly uh, uh, or it can be done prior to the uh, uh, management of the vasic vaginal fistula if you are already. Uh, have a confirmed diagnosis of post vaginal fistula. But in our center, and we usually routinely do, it is isolated examination and anesthesia. Okay. Dr. Hudedar, you want to say something? Okay. Fine. So no, I agree with Dr. Gite. Yeah. Okay, Paras, what was done? Paras? So Paras, Paras may have got uh, probably muted. So the, they may have done a sister's copy probably. And they have confirmed the diagnosis of radiological diagnosis that is a okay, three so millimeter I will, you, I will tell you what has happened, sir. They yes. Initially, they, it was the first time they said that it is the right sided urethro uh, vaginal uh, just saying, uh, fistula. So they did the cystoscopy. Left side, they could not find out the uretic orifice. Right side, they put a digestion. Again, they did it uh, second time before surgery, and they could see the left uretic orifice very well. So bilateral digestanting was done, and uh, followed by that, they have done uh, uh, the repair. Paras, sir, we will we will discuss what is the radiological. Yeah, you can you, you just go ahead with this. Yeah. So the CT, CT has shown a three millimeter uh, fistula, fistulous communication between uh, bladder and uh, vagina on the CT scan as per the report. And the same finding when it is confirmed with the cystoscopy, then what will be the plan in such type of patient?
for uh, but then the success rate uh, is not uh, well documented in these cases for a definite repair i would uh, uh, prefer going for an abdominal uh, uh, approach for a uh, open vvf repair sir yes so you are uh, uh, correct uh, but uh, as far as the indication for conservative management what is the in- what are the indications uh, which suggest the conservative management required Uh, clinically when there is urine leakage is decreased after placing the catheter that is one indirect evidence then fistula size uh, should be 3 mm or less a tract should be long and oblique and uh, uh, the uh, the mat- mat- fistula is mature. mature in such such type of cases the catheter algorithm plus minus anticholinergic drug uh, can be tried and uh, after 2 to 3 week it will be reassessed and if the uh, if still there is a persistence of the clinical uh, symptoms then in such situation we have to go for repair our primary complication mm should be repaired for surgical so 3 mm versus 5 mm complicated uncomplicated fistula should be treated with Uh, so sir, uh, can I ask a question? Conservative management. Sir, for yeah, conservative, yeah, management, conservative uh, management, fistula should be recent onset. Uh, less than. Uh, sir, can we do it? This patient is already two months old. So I think it's... Uh, or uh, yeah, should it be within yeah, 72 yeah, to 40 hours? Yeah, we are discussing uh, as, as the fistula less than three weeks. And uh, it is a 3 mm on uh, CT scan. In this particular... It is a three month first contract and site indicated it is and then contract where the conservative management cannot be tried is a predated patient ex- extensive scarring around the fistula or uh, more than uh, six week or the uh, six week of the uh, yeah, uh, so the fish uh, the leakage is not uh, decreasing in spite of uh, four to six week catheterization. So these are indirect things which can contraindicate the conservative treatment. Yeah. Uh, what uh, we did was trans-abdominal uh, fistula repair. So what can someone tell me what are the different types of repair? Uh, so can, I, can you tell me? Or, okay, okay, you, you tell, tell me. So it can be either transvaginal or transabdominal, sir. Uh, in transabdominal, uh, transabdominal, we have the option of uh, uh, transvesical uh, or uh, intraperitoneal approach or uh, nowadays laparoscopy and robotic can be tried. In transvaginal, we have three approaches, the large score, the RAS and the Webster approach. Can you tell about uh, RAS repair? Uh, so in uh, RAS repair, what is done is... Uh, 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 Foley's catheter is passed through the uh, psychogenal fistula and uh, fistula is retracted. A flap uh, superiorly and inferiorly is created for around uh, 2 to 3 centimeters and uh, uh, following that uh, uh, excision of the fistula is done and uh, primary repair of the bladder mucosa and perivesical tissue and uh, followed by uh, uh, vagina is done in uh, three uh, in three to four years with uh, 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 with non overlapping uh, suture lines. Sir, in RAS repair, the uh, once the fistulous tract is circumcised, uh, we like to uh, it, uh, close the first layer horizontally, and uh, the second layer of the detrusor, uh, which is the uh, Lamberting layer. That is done, sir, perpendicular to it. And if we want to add a third layer, we can interpose a graft at that place. 
and uh, the vaginal flap is uh, pulled away so that the suture lines are uh, uh, non overlapping okay so uh, i will tell you actually i have assisted dr raj shomoras so i'll tell you exactly how he is doing so what he does it he has got some uh, instrument similar to mixture but it is very pointed so he puts it through the urethra and brings out anteriorly from the uh, abdominal wall he will open it up take uh, 16 french foley catheter and pull it inside doing the suprabibic cystostomy okay. after that he will take 12 number or 14 number uh, foley catheter he will widen the fistulous tract and put this uh catheter inside and another one in the periurethra periurethra usually he puts it at the end so now after doing this he will pull the balloon is inflated about 10 cc and he will pull this uh catheter so the fistula will be seen in front of you again he will make two flaps about 1.5 to 2 cm dissect it and superiorly he will go up to the peritoneum so as you have seen one layer will be sutured after excision of the tract he will suture vertically and second horizontally and in between he will pull uh, peritoneum and keep it between the two layers after finishing this job he will put periurethral catheter and put about 200 to 250 cc of methylene blue wait for 1 minute or 1 and 1/2 minute to see whether there is any leakage or not okay and he will call off the procedure so this is what he used he is routinely doing okay so can someone tell me trans abdominal sir in trans abdominal uh, it's a supra pubic uh, approach it could be sir uh, 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 it is the either the o corner repair or the modified o corner repair given by dr dalila sir and uh, in the o corner repair sir after uh, uh, the extra peritoneal or intra peritoneal uh, mobilization of the bladder uh, it is bivalved in between stay sutures uh, which act as traction as well as uh, for hemostasis they are uh, mirrored sutures and the bladder is bivalved Uh, till the uh, vesica vaginal fistula is reached and uh, thereafter it is uh, further dissected by 1 or 2 cm beyond the fistula tract and uh, the fistula tract is excised and uh, after closing the uh, the vagina um, we like to put in the retromentum uh, with long suture and uh, Uh, close it, and then uh, the bladder is uh, sutured uh, in either single or two layers with vitreal two zero zero. And we also like to keep uh, uh, an SPC and uh, a periurethral catheter. <coughs> oh, that's what. Uh, whatever you have described uh, is uh, right. But there are uh, three, four important points which is usually asked in exam and usually discussed in each and every uh, conference. Also, is one is the uh, timing of repair, another is the uh, excision of the fistula or no excision of the fistula, third is uh, sending to the histopathology or not sending to the histopathology. Then uh, fourth is uh, how much dissection around the fistula. And uh, fifth is a uh, non-translap overlapping suture line necessity not necessity. And uh, another thing is placement of SPC optional. It is a it is not a compulsory. So these all points should be discussed. So important thing is uh, first first point we will discuss is uh, when the fistula repair to be done. Uh, in there are three. Three situations usually, so anybody can tell. Tanmay or Shashwat, anybody can tell. 
sir if it is an obstetric fistula uh, it is advisable to wait for at least 3 to 6 months so that uh, the area of ischemic necrosis is well demarcated uh, for gynecological following gynecological surgery sir a waiting period of 3 months is usually uh, described sir and uh, for radiation associated uh, fistula even uh, some uh, people are advising 1 to 1 and a half years before uh, the obliterative endarteritis manifests completely and then we should proceed for the uh, repair sir so you can tell uh, like this is the, if you have called intra uh, intraoperatively or Im- immediately within the 7 to 2 hour if the fistula is diagnosed in such situation you have to go ahead with the repair of the fistula it is called a golden period in case of the vasectomy analysis uh, uh, repair the within a 72 hour or after the six, people after sorry after the three, minimum 3 months and at the three months scope it suggests to that there is inflammation need you have to wait more time that is four month five month six. so you have to reassess reassess and whenever you feel it visualize mature then only you have to operate so this is the within the 72 hour or after the three months this is the answer in exam and as far as the complex obstetric fistula for six months and post dated fistula 12 month to 18 month so that you have already told this is timing of the fistula another is excision of the fistula tract necessary or not necessary no. then uh, so there are there, there are bolo bolo there some people advise excision of the fistula tract but uh, the flip side to it is that it may cause bleeding and for that we lab may have to use electrocautery which may uh, worsen the take, vascularity of the uh, tissues to be sutured another thing is that the if it is a mature fistula it will have fibrosis and the sutures would hold better so uh, sir in rash rash repair fistula excision of the fistula fistula get wider okay. size of the fistula more Now, if you excise the fistula, the size will get increased. Okay, but the proponent of the excision of the fistulas is want to excise the fistula because there are fresh edges, three fashionable edges, and that will heal better. That is their concept of excision of the fistula. The people who don't want to excise the fistula, they will think like the it is already a fibrotic ring. It will hold the suture properly. and that but that particular area is ischemic so the proponent of not excision the holding of the suture proponent of the excision fresh edges and healing of the healing these are the two ways of thinking the excision and the and not any depend totally depend on the, for that particular surgeon so sending uh, the trust the by is routine, not routinely done until and otherwise there is a history of having uh, geo malignancy uh, so if you want to confirm the stage or if you want to uh, rule out the recurrence in that if you want to diagnose the malignant fistula if you are suspecting and if you have already clinically locally advanced malignancy and causing lines of suspicion for confirmation uh, and uh, staging information you have to take fistula for uh, histopathological examination uh, the section around the fistula as far as that is a very important step if you want to avoid the recurrence you have to dissect at least 1 to 1 point minimum if you dissect 3 to 4 cm then that may there may be severe bleeding the chances of injury to the small nerve nerve endings and uh, then post operatively the bladder may have some underactive bladder so that that 4 and 5 Is not required, but it should not be less than one centimeter. So one to two centimeter all around the fistula, uh, all beyond the fistula, all around should be dissected between the bladder and the anterior vaginal wall. There is always a bleeding. You don't worry about that bleeding. Just dissect all around, and suture uh, should be perpendicular to each uh, each other. If you are vaginized, uh, if you are sharing uh, transversely, then you have to suture the bladder uh, vertically. Uh, that is the uh, non overlapping sutures this is again important point uh, vagina should be sutured with vicre uh, 30 as what total liver to zero single line and bladder fully 
minimum two layer. So in in between the examiner may ask what are the structures to be placed in between. The momentum is not available. <coughs> this is a common question asked in exam. Sir, if the uh, momentum is not available uh, and we are doing a pervy joinal repair, then we can uh, use a marchius flap, sir. Which is a, a labial uh, fibro fatty flap, and uh, or we can uh, pull down the peritoneum uh, as uh, described by when, sir. When when you are going from abo and telling a first alternate as a marsh's flap is not a good idea. If you are inside the abdomen. You are planning. You are doing the work on the repair. You have already append appendicular epiploiki. You have peritoneum. You have n number of things. Can we rotate of the bowel? Then she rose of the bladder. Bladder transposition. Okay, अपन बोल सकते हैं and अगर वो सभी कुछ नहीं मिल रहा है तो बाद में फिर that can be brought from down to up. Usually, momentum will go from up to down. So whenever, 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 all type of structures are there is all type of fistula surgeries. If it is not available, other uh, thing can be tried, but that should be initially uh, to be told from the abdomen only. And again, it is of open type and laparoscopic type and robotic type. So, so if when you exam, they ask you what you advise to the patient. So I will give all options. It can be done with laparoscopy. It can be done with robotic robotic. It can be done. I am accustomed with open surgery. If he is okay with open surgery, then I will do open surgery. That will be the answer in exam. Yes, sir. So post surgery. Then again, SPC placement of SPC is optional. If examiner is insisting for the SPC, accept that and tell the SPC can be placed. So then, which which catheter the drain should be removed first? SPC should be removed first. Peritoneal should be removed first. And what will be the post-operative protocol? That can be asked in exam. So if you are play, if you are a proponent of the SPC, we are also placing the SPC. Then first is what you will what you will remove. What we are doing is two to three weeks. Usually bladder. Suppose it is a bladder stone surgery. They think and remember like that. It is a bladder stone surgery. So two week or three week, at least after four, 14 days, peritoneal catheter can peritoneal catheter remove the peritoneal catheter. Wait for one 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 more week. At at the end of three to four week, so do the cystography, assess the leak, then clamp the SPC, check again with sonography, peri peri was second leak, clinically any tenderness, any signs of um, um, fever. And if there is nothing is there, remove the SPC and ask the patient to pass the urine. That will that that is what to be done usually uh, in all the places, and we are also doing the same thing. So what advice you will give at the time of discharge to the patient? Uh, so firstly, to void uh, timely voiding mm -hmm. and uh, regular uh, urine routine examinations to ensure that there is no infection. to avoid strenuous activity for uh, around uh, uh, four weeks to avoid sexual intercourse for three months and uh, in case uh, it is not post uh, restrict in this case it's post hysterectomy but if in case you are preserving uterus uh, one year will avoid pregnancy yes and if it, if the patient is uh, it is a uh, uterus preserving and the patient want to pregnancy then what LSS will be the lcs will be the should be delivered So better to avoid the pregnancy for next one year, and if it is not possible, then plan elect to LSCS and sexual abstinence for three months. That is one more advice. So this is all about one case of uh, vasectomy fistula. So we will go go ahead with second case, sir. Yeah, second case. And any anybody any doubt, please ask. If we know, we will tell right now. If we don't know, we will go ahead and back come back and tell too. So yeah. it is a just a panel discussion like thing. No, we, we all are uh, getting information from each other. Doctor Gita sir. Sir. Sure. Hello. Sir. Sure, sir. Doctor Hunter sir. Sir, uh, can we tell them about the vaginal repairs in supine position or the third army position and jack knife position? Sir, आप अगर कर रहे हो और बताना चाहते हो तो well most welcome sir. नहीं सर गवर्नर शाह को पूछो ना क्योंकि हम जब स्टूडेंट थे ना तब डॉक्टर बापट इन साइन हॉस्पिटल ही यूज्ड टू डेमोस्ट्रेटर्स इन दैट जैकनेप पोजीशन प्रोन पोजीशन फिस्टुला रिपेयर फॉर्म आई विल आई विल टेल आस्क रिक्वेस्ट सर 
but before that i will uh, clear it that ki, uh, when this is another question ki, yeah. what uh, what type of uh, fistula uh, repair should be treated with what way that is uh, abdominal yeah. repair and what yes. vagina repair yes. so yes. there is there is there is a paper on that of mine or myself is uh, published in obstetric and uh, uh, the, uh, gynecology journal Excellent. if you are expert in any for expert in vaginal root you can do any damn fistula by vaginal root if you are expert I... in uh, abdominal root any damn fistula can be done by the abdominal yeah. root so the indication what previously it is supratagonal fistula mm. always should be treated with the uh, yeah. uh, abdominal root and infratagonal fistula should be treated with vaginal root this is vaginal. nothing like that yeah. guideline says that there is nothing like that it is just the experience of the treating surgeon which uh, which should uh, which will decide the ways how the fistula is treated and, and yeah. in some specific situations like involvement of the ureter complex fistula involvement yeah. of yeah. surrounding structure in that particular situation definitely yeah. abdominal yeah so gorang sir and... vaginal root agar hai to bata di maja i i explained them na about the shomoras what he is doing acha otherwise uh, oh, I, uh, in to... the sir in nadiyad we used to uh, do purely transvasical supratrigonal fistula purely transvasical yeah no abdominal opening no peritoneal opening only cystostomy uh, like our sister thought of me this one we used to retract remove the uh, tract and close the bladder in vertical and horizontal fashion and purely intravasical uh, transvasical opens without opening abdomen without using momentum and we published series of 50 cases with very good results so it sir ultimately it is depend upon the how uh, you are uh, trained with and uh, how yeah. to which yeah. surgery you are accustomed with yeah yeah fine okay so now we Neurot- go to the second scenario yeah paras so the scenario 2x She is a 34-year-old lady. Complains of intermittent involuntary passage of urine since seven months. Painless. It is painless. Increase on lying down position. Normally, normal urine sensation and maturation is also present. Patient also complained of blood in urine since two months, which is painless associated with each menstrual cycle. Uh, it is all. It is only present at the time of menses. Uh, it is uh, associated with passage of blood. at with each menstrual cycle there is history of lscs in view of fetal distress 8 month back okay so sultana what is your probable diagnosis it is a menorrhea and it is because of a vesico uterine fistula which is large so what you like to do uh, i uh, i would like to um, assess with a ct uh, uh, after the routine investigations for a definitive diagnosis uh, examination will be done okay and, uh, yes sir. so what you will find in per vaginal examination uh, the fistulas uh, opening will be there mm. you will be able to see fistulas opening Yes, sir. It might be large. But you are saying it is vasico uterine. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. It will. Not... So you will not be able to see any. Yes, sir. With vasico uterine fistula is usually a supra cervical fistula, or at the max it is at the level of cervical opening. so uh, palpation from below or seeing from below is technically definitely not possible uh, it is only a radiological diagnosis and diagnosis can be with the ct scan or histosalpingography uh, both can and clinical examination the classical patient is classically presenting with uh, cyclical hematuria uh, this is the classical presentation of vasco uh, uterine fistula it is also called as ushib syndrome and if you want to preserve the uterus then just dissect in between and repair both side if you don't want to preserve the uterus do the hysterectomy and repair the bladder that's all so what investigation ct urogram okay sultana tell me what investigation you like to do 
CT urography and uh, if it is, uh, we can uh, fill the bladder up uh, with contrast and okay. we can for that. If it is not visible with it, then a hysterosalpingography can be done. And Paras, just show them sitting. Can you comment on that, Sultana? Can you see anything? Sashwat, Ajinkya, you can also see and if you have seen so, anything. Uh, uh, the delayed films of this uh, city. Contrast in the bladder. Okay. Anyway. So like to have the delayed films of the city. Yeah, delayed film. Paras, you have got all the films, huh? So just read the report, Paras. As you can see, there is nothing seen. So the CT was grossly normal. There is no evidence of any fistula. Right. So now next, what you'll do? Sir, we'd like to get a CT cystogram along with or avoiding cystic urethrography, sir. Patient is already tired. Can we do something definitive? Suppose cystogram also not doesn't show anything, but patient has got hematuria. We can go ahead with cystoscopy, sir. Diagnostic cystoscopy, sir. Yeah. Okay. Parents, show them cystoscopy. This is the right view, Jay. So this is the fistula strike, supra trigonal. This. So we try to negotiate the glide wire. Initially it was difficult, but ultimately we were able to put this glide wire and we saw that it came out from uh, the vagina. vagina and from the basically from the cervix. cervix. Okay, fine. So now next, what you want to do? I'd like to counsel the patient uh, regarding the uh, the condition that she has and ask regarding the uh, whether she wants further. Uh, uh, she has got only one child and she is 32 years old. Huh? Yeah. Yes, sir. In that, in that case, uh, I'd like to plan a repair, sir. Uh, transabdominal. So, what type of repair you will do? Uh, this will be a transabdominal repair similar to O'Connor's with, uh, uh, with interposition of graft and uh, closure of the uterus and bladder multiple ways. Okay, fine. So we also did the same thing. Just show them the photographs for us. So we did the same. This is a glide wire placed. Uh, uh, this is a ureter catheter placed through the fistula. This is a bladder repair. This is the uterus repair and momentum was transposed. Okay. Fine. So, scenario... Can I ask one thing? Sir? Yeah. So, see, this patient also had uh, intermittent uh, involuntary passing of urine. So, like, uh, in case of uh, uterovasical fistula, like, patient is completely, uh, like, there is uh, no leak or there could be some leakage or intermittent leakage. Is 
इंटरमीडियंट ओके फाइन थर्ड सीनियर गो एट पारस अ 54 ईयर ओल्ड लेडी कंप्लेंस ऑफ इनवॉलेंट्री पैसेज ऑफ यूरिन इन 6 मंथ इट इज पेनलेस देयर इज नॉर्मल यूरिनरी सेंसेशन एंड मैच्यूरेशन प्रेजेंट इन बिटवीन देयर इज अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ लैप्रोस्कोपिक हिस्टेक्टमी 6 मंथ बैक Uh, just after seven days on post op day seven patients started having the similar complaints on examination there is a leakage of urine seen per vagina okay so sir uh, uh, depending upon the history what patient is giving uh, so those are a few uh, differential diagnoses i like to give is one is uh one is a uh, small vesicular vaginal fistula in non dependent part uh vesicular vaginal fistula at the uh, the urethral bladder neck what could be a uh, urethral vaginal uh, vesicular fistula so what you like to do <coughs> like to get a, a ct urogram okay fine paras do you have so this is the reconstructed film this is a different film this is a different case this patient paras this is a different case this patient we had seen 7th day or 8th day after uh, uh, laparoscopic hysterectomy and she had a per vaginal uh, leakage and this is what paras has shown is a little different case this is another case so as you can see on the right hand side there is a ureteric injury and you are not able to see the lower ureter no. right ajinkya yes sir so there is now so what you like to do about the upper ureter urinoma uh, sir uh, so i like yeah. to go ahead with the uh, like uh, what next investigation sir or the or the the procedure you are asking sir you know what if, you, if you want to become wiser by doing sure, any sir. investigation let me know So I like to get a cystoscopy done of this patient, sir. Ah, huh, so cystoscopy. So you are going ahead with the cystoscopy. Yes, sir. Then what so you do? On cystoscopy, I like to on cystoscopy. So I there like is no to... fistula in the bladder. Okay. Uh, no fistula in the bladder. I like to assess the capacity of the bladder. Then uh, I like to do RG. Then then I like to do an RG on this side to see whether there is any. Uh, so there was extra vasodilation. Ajinkya, so yes, sir. If you see the picture carefully yes. and compare it with opposite side, it is far away. Where is the ureter of opposite yes. side? Where is the bladder? Where from the part leaking? So it it may be a traumatic or iatrogenic ureter injury probably, and there is yes. a complete transaction. That may be, may be possibility. That's what I am expecting in this patient. as a history and if it is leaking inside the pelvis aside of the bladder then what how the doing a cystoscope we are planning still planning for one trial of digest tenting in a complete transaction then yes but that is again not a good idea whenever there is a when there is a complete transaction the doing uh, uh, wasting it is like wasting a time so whenever there is a collection so i will think take it like this How much is the collection? Is there any internal leukos? Is patient had a tenderness? Is leukocytosis? Is patient had fever? Patient had hydronephrosis? Yes or no? I didn't plan the things. So if all these things are there, then there is an indication for That primary care. So, so next question. So what are the indications? Again, I will ask as a generalist. What are the primary indications for bilateral primary care? Sir, if the patient is having uh, uh, very poor nutrition, or uh, if it is a patient is having uh, uremia or sepsis at the time of presentation, 
or uh, patient is having terminal Agreed. malignancy terminal malignancy and the chances of uh, survival are very poor sir yes. uh, in those kind of situations sir we would like to offer uh, as a palliative bilateral pca uh, also post radiation if you are delaying the procedure for a long time sir. yes i agree so these are uh, sir, sir kya tha bata dijiye yeah so normally what we plan is that whenever we get a uretic this is our protocol whenever we get a uretic injury first we like to do a cystoscopy and try to put a guide wire we don't do rgp first first we try to put a guide wire because we are giving the best chance by putting a guide wire it's like a pathfinder and if it if it is not totally transected it may go uh, up to the upper ureter so in this case also first we try to put a guide wire but it was going out second we attempted urs and in urs we could see some opening so we uh, i put the guide wire which went into the upper ureter into the kidney so we have put the digest tank we kept the digest tank for about two and half months removed it patient again came back with the leak and uh, so we have offered her uh, now the repair so uh, uh, placement of digest tank in each and every case of uretic injury is not mandatory okay it, it is a it is a situation suppose there is a complete transaction and fluid around and if you place digestant sir is successful but what 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 what, what will be there there will be a gap in between of near circumferential gap there is there is a need of at least one one lay, one part or one side of ureter is should be intact so that it will heal around the uh, digestant when there is a complete transaction or cut in two ends are at least 2 3 4 mm away from each other then in such situation it will heal by a fibrosis sometimes and lateron presented as obstructive uh, obstructive uh, hydrotonephrosis or it will not heal in spite of digestion there is a leak collection will not go and you have to go for again a pc yeah another so, thing is that the rim of contrast should come Correct. across that injury to place the digestant and another thing is that if the fistula is very near to the vasico uretic junction the chances of it healing are less so you will require reimplantation of ureter i agree uh, yeah achi uh, i mean uh, paras do you have that second case where digestanting was done or do you have only rgp नहीं 12 hours so, so, so this patient i'll tell you the history this patient had undergone uh, hysterectomy it was a little difficult hysterectomy and uh, gynecologist was not very sure means he had a doubt that he has done some injury to the uh, ureters but he was not very sure so he had kept a very close uh, the thing check on this patient and uh, there was a complete anuria for 12 hours so he did a sonography sonography showed bilateral mild uh, yeah mild fullness of both the pelvic cell system and the creatinine which was 0.9 before surgery had become 1.5 so okay now sultana in this case what you like to do Ajinkya, can you tell me what you like to do? Sir, uh, depending upon as a urologist, you are called by a gynecologist. Okay. 
sir first i like to assess the patient the vital situation is in the hypovolemia or any uh, any uh, nephrotoxic drug given during the surgery uh, no no he is absolutely okay. fine he has got okay. mild so tachycardia so considering upon the uh, mild tachycardia considering the ultrasound findings mild hydronephrosis creatinine has increased what i suggest here is uh, either there is uh, bilateral uh, ureteric uh, injury or ligation of the ureter so so what you will do why you are thinking too much it is it is a straight forward question no no need to think what options in front of you you, you cannot re explore this patient sir bilateral pcn sir pcn yeah that's all you have to do it either of the uc with the help of ultrasound without the help of ultrasound because in this particular patient already 12 hour patient is in anuria serum creatinine 5 giving anesthesia with 5 no no not 5 it was 1.5 1.5 1.5 ha 1.5 and bilateral hydronephrosis by my so, mindfulness mild mild just mindfulness so you can go by way again if the it is a mild bilateral hydronephrosis and uh, serum creatinine is 1.5 in such situation if you are asking me i will still stuck up with my bilateral pcn okay so i as dr jitesh said there are both the options open either you can if, if it is a very short period of time and the, if the vitals and everything is fine you can again re explore and uh, if you are very That's confident or you do bilateral pcn so either of that so anyway in this patient they called the urologist and urologist said explore he went up to the uh, he had found out the dilated ureter and he went up to the obstruction he cut both the ureter and he found out that left side there is a double moiety double ureter and he did a rgp on the table can you show paras ali bag se aaya sir patient yeah <laughs> rgp film sir नहीं मैंने डाला नहीं इसमें to the lower moiety and he did a reimplantation of lower moiety into the bladder now sultana how will you pay, put the stent you like to put one stent on the left side or two stents on the left side ajinkya sir one stent uh, passing through the anastomosis of the upper ureter so you will okay so you will put the stand from upper moiety across so the ureter ureter anastomosis and ureter vesical anastomosis right yes sir okay fine so 3 days it was absolutely fine four sir. day patient had a leak so patient had about 300 cc coming through the so drain and sir. patient had a leak even from the abdominal wound okay gitek sir ab bolo aap kuch bolna chahte hain all all four for all four students he has done end to side ureteric anastomosis and ureteric reimplantation in a duplex moiety there, there is a classical uh, no no other option or classical teaching whenever there is a duplex moiety you have to do a common seat reimplant you are dissecting in between and doing a uh, one end to side anastomosis that will definitely hamper uh, vascularity of either of the ureter either upper moiety or lower moiety and that will end up into the leakage 100% until because we have to separate both ureter at least one one to point one point five centimeter for doing uh, ureter ureterostomy and again distally there is again ureteric implant then one to one point five centimeter that About four to five centimeter, both ureters should 
need to be separated for doing such type of procedure. If he has done already the th same thing, then only one stent. Okay. I think sir has uh, disconnected. Disconnect. No problem. So, okay. I think yeah. as sir said yes. very rightly, you should not uh, jeopardize the vascularity of the ureter. So, you must take a common sheet and do re-implantation of ureter, whether you are doing it for the reflux, whether you are going to do for any primary mega ureter or whether you are doing in such cases. So, this is the protocol. Okay, so now on the fourth day, patient had 300 cc of drain and uh, per from the abdominal wound also, there was a leakage. Can you show it, Paras? Can you see it? You didn't yes. come in? Yes. Okay. So now what do you like to do? So this patient has already undergone two procedures. Uh, and I think this is uh, again a leak from the... Uh, we don't know what is the where is the site of leak, either from the left side or the right side or the, the two ureter anastomos. So... So what do you like to so, do? So what will what is the creatinine post? Uh, creatinine yes. is one one point one. Paras, I am right. Uh, yes, sir, one point two. One point two. Sir, we would like to repeat an ultrasound scan to check for the hydroelectric nephrosis. So it is showing mild hydro nephrosis. Bilaterally, sir, or uh, on either lateralized to one side. Uh. It was fullness right on the side right side. Is more left side is left. Uh, no, hydronephrosis is not there. Yes, Sultan, I want to say something. The creatinine level of the fluid. Okay, yeah. just show him. It was 1.9. Creatinine was 1.9. Fluid creatinine. What, what, what will be there as a 300 output? In a drain, during except during, yes, sir. no, but and surprisingly, it, it is persistent. But in exam, if you are asking, telling like this, every, all examiner will accept that for confirmation of fluid, it is urine, it can be done. Uh, best thing is uh, uh, 1.1 creatinine, go for it. Repeat a city, yeah. okay, show them the city. So the last film, the last film, huh. that colored one, just show them. Hmm. As you can see, there is a mild right hydro nephrosis okay. and uh, from the left hand side, you can see the leak going into the drain yes. on the right hand side. Pick it large. Okay. And the both the stents are there. The stent is from lower moiety entering. So what 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 goes wrong? So patient had How little leakage, and we thought that we'll give good antibiotics. And after 48 hours, we will do the left-sided PCN, upper moiety PCN. That was a plan. But in 48 hours. Abdominal gut from 85 centimeter become 79 centimeter. The leakage stopped. Not even a drain. Nothing was there from the wound also. So now what next you will do? Ajinkya. Why there is increase in girth? 
No, no. The it, has decreased. The girls had increased. Now it is decreased. Decreased. Okay. De decreased. Yes, Ajin. Kya? What's next? Uh, at present, sir, we will continue with conservative management of antibiotics, and we we'll like to repeat an uh, ultrasound after uh, uh, forty-eight hours, twenty-four hours. Okay, so we repeat an ultrasonography. It is just showing mild fullness on the left hand side and no fluid in the abdomen. Uh, we'll continue with the conservative management, sir, at present. So, what about mobilization? Will you like to mobilize the patient? Ah, uh, we can mobilize. When you will remove the drain, sir, we'll uh, we'll like to wait at least five days uh, post surgery to post surgery uh, or post stoppage of post stoppage of the leak, and uh, then we'll decide sir whether to remove. Okay, on the safer side, it is always better to either means to do sonography. That's what I feel. When we are done so much, just wait for few days, do the sonography, and then remove the. Drain. When you Drain. remove the police catheter, two weeks, sir. Yeah, two weeks. Normally, I would have removed, but now it is better to wait for three weeks if and I then know. remove. Now, what you will tell to the patient? What can happen to the upper moiety? Even if the leakage has stopped, what can happen? Sir, there will be stomatic structure, picture or something that will be dilatation of the upper moiety and then may go for dysfunction. Yeah. So you will have to explain to the patient that there are chances that later on she may develop structure at the anastomosis and she may require another procedure. So you will keep her under observation. And after the removal of the DJ stand, again you will like to do sonography if required CT scan. Correct? Yes. Here the lesson lesson learned is first thing you have to do a common seat reimplantation one. Two, if you are done the things, you have to place the DJ from bladder to the lower mat ureter to the upper mat ureter. That is across the ureter ureterostom. So that DJ will across the two anastomoses. Ureteric implantation as well as ureter ureterostomy, and that will secure your both suture line. That has not done. The lower moiety ureter probably may be initially leak, upper moiety ureter is initially leaking, and how it has stopped that lower moiety ureter DJ may have blocked that your opening, and it will it will end up into the hydro ureter process. So, if you want to really want to secure that upper moiety, then you cannot sit on this. You have to do something. So, what you can do? You cannot do from something from below right now. Insert immediately within a week or two. No manipulations like ureteroscopy, searching for opening, placing the guide wire. It will not. It is not easy and not possible. So, place the question. Here, leak has stopped, patient is doing well, but it will definitely, after a month or two, it will end up into upper mitral hydrotonia process. And that you have to keep watch. If you are going with this type of treatment or conservative treatment, you, 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 you are, uh, the upper mitral, uh, you should be under continuous vigilance or watch. See, understand one thing. This patient, the, the gynecologist had done yeah. surgery and in the middle of the night, after 12 hours, he had called a urologist. Now you will come across okay. such cases not so often. Okay. Where the, all the facilities are not available. So you will do cystoscopy, you will do bilateral RGP, try to put ureterinoscopy. And then when you open up this patient, it is already like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the night and you are doing without much assistance. Uh, for another three hours or four hours. At that sure. time, those small, small points you have to remember. And so whatever Dr. Kite said, the idea of these classes are that not only to pass in your exams, 
but even in your life exam you should you know get a clear vision and do whatever is right because this you are not going to come across many times it will be once or twice in your uh, throughout your practice so once you have seen these cases once you know what to do it will be very easy for you whenever you are in doubt whenever you are alone practicing somewhere at periphery such type of calls when comes don't explore the patient ask him to refer to some higher center or if availability place the patient yes you is a guided patient if there is availability independently exploring the patient who is having a n number of complication in the midnight without having assistance is not a good idea yes <clears throat> but see in the early stage the people do get carried away because the operating surgeon is you know under stress they want to like you know expenditure and lots of other things they want to save their skin so they are also very persuasive so sometime you will be you know also deceived and uh, you will be compelled to do so this is a time when this small small points will help you to overcome all the you know hurdles so any right. questions from anyone in all these four cases please let us know Dr. Uh, so Mahesh, sorry, you are there. Role of placing uretic catheter in VVF. Yeah. See, normally we say uh, what we do is that before doing vasco vaginal fistula, I'll uh, next time you remind me, we will I'll show you the video of uh, robotic assisted uh, VVF repair. So what we do is first we. what i like to do is i put the both the uh, either uretic catheter or dg stand on in both the side and also uretic catheter through the uh, fistula strain because it will guide us and we can palpate it and we can uh, you know instead of totally by alving the uh, bladder a small incision can suffice any other question So in that last case, what could have been the cause of such gross dilatation on the other side? Which okay, case? Yeah, initial uh, dilatation only. Yeah, initial. That must be the initial dilatation. Initial itself. Okay. Or there are chances that you know some adhesions might be still there, or probably this uh, uh, drain is there, na? No? So the drain, no, that could be impinging. That could be pressing over the ureter. Sir, can you uh, describe in brief the uh, how to tunnel the Marshes flap? Mm. Doctor Gite, sir, uh, if if uh, you are doing a surgery in a uh, so for example male uh, uh, bulbar urethra or uh, posterior urethra. Or some uh, urethral uh, vaginal fistulas, or uh, from below vasco vaginal fistulas, we have to uh, uh, take incision along the longitudinal axis of the uh, labia majora, dissect the fat in between. You have to you have to localize the uh, perforators or blood vessels either proximally or uh, superiorly or inferiorly. If you are moving it down from up to down. Then preserve the below below perforators. If you are moving from below to up, then preserve the upper perforators. Dissect it all around. Keep intact the vessels. Then the when you in in a male it is a perineal area already already open. In a female the vaginal area is already open. You have to tunnel in between below the vaginal mucosa or the area raw area in the vulvar urethra in male and the Uh, uh, sorry, in in male in female, we have to tunnel the uh, underneath the vaginal mucosa and brought it to the uh, uh, operative site. So uh, it is nearby only. Tunneling is near about one or two three centimeters because area aside medially and area laterally already open and in between only a small area of peritoneum. 
and uh, sorry for in bit i am talking about in between that bulbar uh, urethra because that is in male and i am uh, misunderstanding with uh, that uh, muscle muscle flare समझा नहीं समझा लॉन्गिट्यूडनल इंसिजन लेना है हार्ट ऑल अराउंड सेट करना है परफोरेटर को मेंटेन रखना है एंड जो एरिया में डिसेक्शन सर्जरी चल रही है समझो फॉर एग्जांपल वसा क्वेश्चन इज फिशल इफ यू आर डूइंग फ्रॉम बिलो दैट रॉ एरिया एंड यू हैव टेकन इंसिजन का रॉ एरिया तो दोनों के बीच में जो भी वेजनल में को जाए उसके बीच में टनल बना देना है और वो उधर लाना जी सर Right. Two, three questions uh, may ask in exam like uh, classification, clinical classification, classification as per the size, classification as per the complexity that is simple, the complex fistula and pathophysiology of obstetric fistula. These are only two, three questions remaining uh, in case of the first question, the fistula that you can read or uh, if you want, I, I can answer them. Or कुछ बोलो सर कुछ है तो और कुछ पूछना है तो पूछने दो because uh, we have in this we have covered everything urethro vaginal fistula utero vaginal fistula and bilateral uretic ligation vasoco vaginal fistula iatrogenic fall good case sir yeah, yeah. so who, who is the father of uf surgery okon ha tomorrow okay mcq question okon <laughs> Achint has answered seems. Who has done a first? Who has done a first trans abdominal view of repair? Opener. Uh, answer to first question is seems. Answer to second question is tender number. So that is all about medical view of. And definitely, yeah. definitely there is a either a long case or short case in the exam. एग्जाम yeah. तुम्हारी कहीं पे भी होने दो दिल्ली से लेकर नीचे तमिलनाडु यूजुअली केसेस मिलता ही है या कदा केस रहता ही सो दैट्स ऑल फ्रॉम आवर साइड आई थिंक सो फर्स्ट वी विल नाउ लेट्स सी नेक्स्ट टाइम व्हाट वी आर डूइंग आइदर वी विल डू सिम लाइक नॉन मेलिग्नेंट केसेस लाइक और कंजेनिटल और depending upon the cases which you are getting or we'll do onco in one or two days we'll let you know and we will inform dr ganesh uh, long, long cases sir pehle uh, finish kar dete hai yeah yeah all long cases only we are going to do ah, all long cases sir like ca bladder hai ca yeah yeah, yeah, yeah all these things hai. yes yes aur uh, ya yeah, fir poj obstruction hai the stone disease either poj obstruction or we will do uh, step by step like localize uh, ca prostate locally advanced and metastatic All those in various sir, we can take one by cancer, one. Muscle invasive and then metastatic. Last time we did sir, one by one we can do all those scenarios. Yes. And sir. for first cases like this, co collection of three four cases will be good sir. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So any suggestions? Please put it on your group, and we will go accordingly. Any okay. suggestions? Any questions? Which be put now to push sir. Fine. and please tell your colleagues also friends also to attend and uh, also to participate sultana i am sure now next time you will not be afraid you will be volunteering correct nahi idhar idhar darne ka koi baat nahi ko jo dil mein aata hai bata do galat ho gaya to ho gaya koi problem nahi don't worry about the wrong things okay okay no. chal yes Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, sir. Good night. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, everybody. Well done. Thanks. Good night. Sultan, man, please. Uh, in the session, uh, by Nato Kerala, you are the host.
Thank you. 